So let us prayerfully um, quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare ourselves to worship our Lord um, through song, through prayers, uh, and through the message as we hear our prelude this morning by our, by our very own Trina Brown.
Good morning. My name is Audra Caldwell, and I'll be serving as your liturgist this morning. As we continue looking at the ways we can all become more highly effective Christians, let us focus today on how we communicate with God through prayer. When we pray, we not only share our innermost feelings with our Creator, but our spirits are revived in ways that are both satisfying and mysterious. Just as our bodies are revived by the gift of water, as we hear in our invitation to worship. Nourished by the streams of prayer, uplifted by oceans of praise, strengthened by rivers of kindness, we are like trees planted by the water. With roots deep in God, the foundation of our faith, and branches raised in prayer and praise. Let us now worship our nourishing God who yearns to be in relationship with us through that great mystery we know as prayer. Amen. Let us continue our worship by singing our hymn of praise. It's me, it's me, O Lord. You'll find the lyrics in your digital bulletin. It's me. this morning for the children's message is in your hands. As a matter of fact, it is your hands. And so what I want you to do right now is I want you to take your hands and put them together as if you were going to pray. All right? Because I'm going to share with you a five-fingered prayer. Now, there are all kinds of different five-fingered prayers out there. But this one that I'm going to share with you, eh, it may be a little different than one that you've learned before. But here's, here's what you're going to, what uh, the five fingers, your five fingers are going to remind you of. First, the closest finger to you is your thumb, right? And that reminds us that we need to pray for the people who are closest to us. 
So that might mean our moms or our dads or our grandmoms or our granddads. It might mean cousins or brothers or sisters, but those people who are closest to you, grown-ups, your spouses, those are they're the people that, that uh, you would pray for first. Now the second finger is our pointer finger, right? We use that to point to people. And our pointer finger reminds us that we want to be, uh, we want God to point us in the right direction. So when we, when we, the next thing we might want to pray for is that God not only send us in the right direction, but our country, our world, um, our church, to point us in the right direction that God wants us to go in. Our third finger is our tallest finger, and that reminds us of the leaders uh, in our world. They might be the leaders of our country, the light leaders of our, our cities or our towns, might be the leaders of our churches or our schools. So whoever happens to be a leader, somebody that you know of as a leader, that is who we would want to pray for next. And then our fourth finger, our ring finger, is actually the weakest finger of all. Now, if you've played the piano, you probably know that. And so the fourth finger reminds us that we need to pray for those who are weak, those who are in need, those who are in trouble, whether they are, are weak because they have um, maybe a, a, a medical condition or they're, they're sick or, or they're living in poverty or... Uh, folks who are homeless, the people who are, who are in need. And then our pinky finger is the smallest finger of all. And you know, the Bible reminds us that we should not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. So our pinky finger reminds us that we should ask for prayers for ourselves, ask God to guide us personally along our faith journey. So we're going to demonstrate that right now during our prayer uh, when we ask for God's guidance. So <clears throat> you keep track with me, okay? All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you because we love you. And we come to you because we know that there are people in our lives that we should pray for. And so, oh God, right now we pray for the people who are closest to us our mothers, our fathers, our spouses, our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, those people that we love the most, oh Lord, be with them. Lord, next we ask for guidance from you. We use our pointer finger to remind us that you point us in the right direction that you would have us go. And so, oh God, lead us, guide us, be with us along our faith journey and always point us in the right direction. And God, our third finger reminds us of the, the leaders in our lives, whether it's our president or our Congress people, our town or city leaders, the leaders in our schools, the leaders in our churches. Oh God, we pray for them, give them guidance, help them to lead us in the best way that they can. And Lord, our fourth finger reminds us to pray for those who are weak, those who are in need. And so, O oh God, be with those who need you the most, whether it's because they are sick or they are grieving, whether they are poor or homeless or hopeless. God, be with those who are in need this day. And finally, O oh God, our pinky finger reminds us that we are perhaps the, the, the ones who, who need you the most, at least according to us. <laughs> it reminds us that, that we are small in comparison to everything in the world, and yet you love us with a love that, that knows no boundaries. Even though we may be just a small part of this world, we are indeed important people, that we have a voice, that we have, um, can give others direction, that we have the ability to help others who are in need. And so, oh God, as we continue our worship this morning 
And as we continue to be in prayer with you every single day, Lord, be with us and guide us and strengthen us all along the way. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Our first scripture, written for an audience of Jewish Christians, speaks to us about building our relationship with God through prayer. Echoing what Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, James writes that essentially we should pray about everything. When we are sick, when we are well, when we have sinned, and when we need to be restored. His words remind us to be persistent in our prayers. Hear this passage from James chapter 13, verses 13 through 16, as found in the Common English Bible. If any of you are suffering, they should pray. If any of you are happy, they should sing. If any of you are sick, they should call for the elders of the church, and the elders should pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Prayer that comes from faith will heal the sick. For the Lord will restore them to health, and if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. For this reason, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful in what it can achieve. May God add blessing to the reading of the scripture. Thank you, Audra, and thank you for serving as our liturgist this morning. Friends, as we enter into our pastoral prayer time, I would just remind you that uh, we have a prayer uh, team that is regularly praying for those people in our hearts and minds. And if you would like to be a member of that prayer team, all you need to do is send us an email at info at songoflifeumc.org, and we'll gladly place you on that prayer team. Unfortunately, we're not able to publicly publish our prayer list uh, because of privacy purposes, but we do um, ask that you keep those in our hearts and in our minds this day in prayer. Uh, this past week, we added a few people uh, to our prayer list in addition to those who are who were um, uh, who communicated that to us uh, during the worship service, and and of course you can do that by simply uh, tapping on the link at the bottom of your screen that says request prayer. But we have a a, a little bit of news on our little friend Jake. Um, he is still in the hospital and is undergoing radiation treatment, um, and uh, the messages that I receive from uh, from his father are are difficult and so we are in a difficult time right now with Jake and so we ask that you continue to keep him in our in your prayers. Uh, we also received word, I received word last night that our friend John Campbell was in a car accident mm -hmm. and he is in the hospital right now but uh, hopefully all he's got is just some bumps and bruises but uh, let's keep John and Marcia in, in prayer this morning. Uh, oh, there was another one that I received yesterday, and now I don't remember who it was, but it'll come to me. So, um, and we, of course, will include these on the prayer list that we send out to our prayer team as well. So, uh, friends, we just ask that you uh, pray for those who are in need, those who need guidance um, at this time. And so, as we lift up our hearts to the Lord in prayer, let us join together first for a moment of silent prayer, and then uh, I will continue in the pastoral prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, as we come to you this day, we are reminded that every single day we should come to you in prayer. That this is our time, our time to be in relationship with you, our time to have a conversation with you, to share with you our joys and our concerns, whether they be for ourselves or for the people around us. And so, O oh God, today, as we lift up our joys and concerns, individually and collectively, we ask that you guide us. We ask that you strengthen us. We ask that you be with us, especially in this difficult time. Lord, we are seeing all across our country, yes, even all across our world, 
a spike in the incidence of this virus. Lord, be with the caregivers. Be with those who are uh, caring for people in the hospitals. Be with the doctors and the nurses and the therapists. Help them to, to care for those um, and to use the expertise that you have given them to care for those who are suffering from this virus. And Lord, we also pray that you will be with all of us. Help us to do the right things to protect one another and to protect ourselves. Oh God, we know that you are with us every step of this journey. And so we ask that you wrap yourself around us and remind us that you are near. And Lord, we also pray for, for those in our congregation who are in need, those who need to feel your healing presence in their lives. Lord, we pray for those who are especially um, suffering this day. And so, O oh God, as we prepare to pray the prayer that your son taught us so long ago, help us to write these words on our hearts as we say them together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I remembered during the prayer. Oh, yes, we want to keep our good friends, uh, Marlene and Jerry Badgero, in our prayers. I they are actually that. traveling. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Marlene was diagnosed with the coronavirus uh, earlier this week and she is on medication and resting and uh, when I spoke to Jerry the other night uh, he was starting to feel symptoms as well so I don't believe he has been tested yet but um, friends let us keep them both uh, in our prayers this day and of course all who have been affected by this virus my friends, if, as we uh, prepare for the message this morning, I invite you to sing along at the hymn of preparation, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Friends, as we continue our sermon series called Seven Habits of Highly Effective Christians, uh, we're reminded that last week we talked about how highly effective Christians uh, immerse themselves in scripture, reading and studying every day. And today we're talking about being in conversation, being in relationship with God, and doing that through prayer. So today I am reading from Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 5, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. This is Jesus speaking. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. May God add wisdom to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. A taxi driver and a preacher were standing in line to get into heaven. The taxi driver approached the gate and St. Peter said to him, welcome, I understand you were a taxi driver. Since I'm in charge of housing, I believe I have found the perfect place for you. You see that mansion up the hill? It's yours. Well, when the preacher heard what St. Peter had said, he thought to himself, wow, if a taxi driver gets a place like that, just think what I will get. So when the pastor got to the gate, St. Peter said to him, welcome. I understand that you were a preacher during your earthly life. You see that shack down in the valley? And before St. Peter could even finish his sentence, the preacher said, wait, I was a preacher. I preached the gospel. I taught people about God. Why does the taxi driver get a mansion and I end up with a shack? Well, St. Peter said, it's actually quite simple. When you preached, people slept. When he drove, people prayed. <laughs> the second habit of highly effective Christians is prayer. It is talking to God. And you know, there are a lot of ways I could be preaching about prayer today, but a wise man, a church consultant, actually told me and a bunch of other pastors during a church growth workshop, uh, he said, pastors, your congregations don't need to hear another sermon on prayer. What they need you to do is encourage them to pray more. So today, I hope that we will do just that but in a little different way than we usually do. Instead of standing here and preaching about prayer and why it is so important, we're going to make this message interactive, as I mentioned earlier during the announcements. We're all going to deliver this message to each other together. Now, normally, if we were all in the same room, we would do this <clears throat> by having you call out your responses to the questions that I'm going to ask. 
But unfortunately, we're not all in the same room. I'm here, and all of you are out there in your own living rooms or dining rooms or family rooms or even your kitchens. So we can't really speak with each other or to each other. But we do have the chat box. And that, my friends, is the next best thing. So throughout this message, I am going to ask you a question. And then you're going to type your responses to that question into the chat box. Now, feel free to share as many responses as you want. And after I've asked the question, I'm going to share a little bit of additional information because, as I mentioned before, there is about a 30 second delay here. So it takes about 30 seconds for you all to get the message that I'm saying right now. Um, and then it'll take you a little while to, to prepare and, and put in your responses. So David's going to keep track of the responses and we're going to share with each other um, what we... Um, uh, think we ought to do and know about prayer. Now, this may not work, my friends. <laughs> this is an experiment. So if it bombs out, I'm going to ask for your grace right now. Uh, but in the meantime, let's, let's get started and see if it's going to work. All right. <clears throat> I've got a little frog in my throat. As usual, it's the Sunday morning frog. I need to evict him to our backyard. <clears throat> All right. That didn't do it, but we'll see. Let's start off with a basic question. Why is prayer important enough to be one of the seven habits of highly effective Christians? In other words, why should we pray? So are you putting that question in the mm. chat box? Good. <clears throat> why should we pray? Now, as you're adding your own responses into the chat, let's turn to the scriptures because surely the Bible tells us something about prayer. And sure enough, if we look at Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, the Apostle Paul writes, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, he writes, Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. But perhaps one of the most important references to prayer is found in the epistle of James, which we heard Audra uh, share with us earlier today. Now, <clears throat> tradition says that, that this was written by the brother of Jesus, but here is what he says. If any of you are suffering, why should you pray? If any of you are sick, excuse me, I said that wrong. Let me go back. If any of you are suffering, they should pray. If any of you are sick, the elders should pray over them. Prayer that comes from faith will heal the sick, for the Lord will restore them to health. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Prayer is the conduit through which we communicate with God. And as these scriptures remind us, communicating with God is one of the most important things that we can and should do as highly effective Christians. But that's not all. We also believe that prayer makes a difference in our lives. According to a survey published in beliefnet.com, when asked why they pray, a handful of Christians said they pray to improve their own lives, but more of them said they pray for others because they believe that through prayer, the lives of others will be improved. A few more said they pray to express their own intentions to God and to thank God for the blessings that they've received in life. But a much larger number of respondents, 28.7%, said that they pray in order to seek God's guidance. And 41.9% say they pray to experience intimacy with God. So let's take a look at what you all said. What were some of the responses to that question, David? Why we should pray? We pray for hope. Uh, 
let's see, when we are made to articulate our deepest yearnings and oh. fears into words, this helps to bring them into focus and perhaps to see what is putting us into a state of unrest. Um, prayer is how we build a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, another said to lift our praises and joys, lift up those who hurt and to honor God. Um, I pray because it brings me calm and peace. Ah, oh, I to like that one. To communicate with God, um, helps develop a relationship and reliance with God, talk with God, and prayer makes me feel closer to God and listen for any uh, message from Him. What a great response. Those are all such wonderful responses to that, and, and all of them are so very true. So let's go on to another question. How often should we pray? How often should we pray? Now, go ahead and put your response in the chat box. And even if someone else says the same thing that you were going to say, say it anyway, because that just might reinforce it for somebody else. Now, once again, we can turn to the scriptures, which tell us we should not only pray often, but always. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, Paul writes, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16, starting with verse 16, we read, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In other words, we are meant to be persistent in prayer. And that may even answer the question as to how often we should pray. And this is something that Jesus demonstrates in what I like to call the parable of the grumpy neighbor. This parable is found in Luke chapter 11, and it goes something like this. A friend knocks on his neighbor's door in the middle of the night and asks for three loaves of bread. It seems a guest has come to visit uh, and the host has nothing for the guest to eat. And so he knocks on the grumpy neighbor's uh, door, but the grumpy neighbor says, go away, my door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything right now. But the first neighbor persists and eventually the grumpy one gives in. He gives his neighbor the bread that he is asking for. And that, Jesus says, is why we should be persistent in prayer. Because the one who is persistent receives. It reminds me of a story that Paul Harvey told during one of his broadcasts many years ago about a three-year-old boy and a trip he made to the grocery store with his mother. Before he and his mother even entered the store, mom said to the little boy, now you're not getting any chocolate chip cookies, so don't even bother asking. And she put her three-year-old son in the shopping cart, and for a while he did just fine, until they came to the bakery, and he saw the chocolate chip cookies. The boy stood up in the seat of the, of the shopping cart and said, Mommy, Mommy, can I have some chocolate, chocolate chip cookies? The mom said, I told you not to ask because you're not going to get any cookies. So the little boy sat back down in his cart and he was fine again until they came across another display of cookies. Mommy, he wailed, can I please have some chocolate chip cookies? I told you, his mother said, no, no cookies today. Now please sit back down. Finally, as the two approached the checkout lines, the boy sensed that this might be his last chance to get some cookies. So before they got to the line, once again, he stood up in the cart and shouted as loud as he could, in the name of Jesus, may I please have some chocolate chip cookies? And as some of the shoppers laughed and others even applauded, the boy and his mother walked out of the store with 23 boxes of chocolate chip cookies given to them by a bunch of very generous shoppers. 
An answer to persistent prayer? Perhaps. So what do you all think? How often should we pray? All right. Um, as often as we feel the prompting of the Spirit, okay. um, there is no limit to when we should pray. In all things, quote, in all things pray. And here's another good little mini quote, without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, here's another one, daily prayer time and continuously in our thoughts. And uh, whenever, that, whenever, <laughs> whenever, not in that, that way, but <laughs> whenever and wherever, um, when things are bad and when all is good. So mm -hmm. not just when that's right. We need something. So yeah. those are excellent. Those are great. Great, great responses. All right, let's go on to our next one. Where should we pray? Where should we pray? In the passage we heard from Matthew this morning, Jesus chastises those who pray in public. He calls them hypocrites, which wasn't a very nice thing to say. He says that we should pray in secret. Now, why do you think he said that? Maybe he believed that when we are by ourselves, we can hear God's voice more clearly and that our prayers will be more sincere. Or maybe he meant that we ought to examine our motives. Are we praying to impress other people? Or are we praying to an audience of one, God? I'm gonna tell you what I believe. I believe that we can pray at any time and at any place. In other words, everywhere is a good place to pray. Is your living room a good place? Yes. Is your dining room a good place? Yes. Is inside your car when you're driving down the freeway a good place to pray? Absolutely, as long as you keep your eyes open and on the road. In fact, I often pray when I am driving. So any place is really a good place to pray, at least in my humble opinion. But enough about what I think. What do you all think? Where should we pray? Okay, so far we have anywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And someone else said everywhere and someone else said anywhere. So that all combined together. And uh, no specific place anywhere, but also privately. That was brought up too. And so let me refresh my screen just in case I might have missed something. It's taken a moment to come in. No, I think that's what we've got. All right, great. Now, I'll admit some places are better than others when it comes to choosing a place in which to pray. But if we want to be highly effective as Christians, we must be willing and able to pray wherever we are. And finally, the last question, how should we pray? How should we pray? Should we pray aloud or in silence? Should we pray prayers that other people have written? Or should we speak to God from the heart? Or should we do all of the above? Well, in Matthew's Gospel, which I read a few moments ago, Jesus gives us a framework we can use to pray. It's that framework that we use every Sunday when we pray the Lord's Prayer. And you know, I think it is good as a framework, as a guideline, but it's just that. A guideline because when it comes to prayer the truth be told there are no hard and fast rules when we pray we nurture our relationship with God by engaging in conversation with God by talking and listening and I when I say listening I mean really listening to God so while it's just fine for us to write and recite our prayers, I think there are times when we should say them spontaneously and from the heart, simply having a conversation with God. And you know, if you ever have a, 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 you know, a loss for words, if you're ever at a loss for words, sometimes just simply saying to God, thank you, is enough. So let's see what you all said. How should we pray? Okay, they're still coming in. 
Uh, okay. Because of the lag. This one's short. Know? Yeah, this one was a little shorter than the other. Yeah, here they come. Um, but what we've got so far is with your heart open to Jesus. So that's how. Um, fervently and frequently. Uh, another says with an open heart and open mind. And somebody said all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> and another said any, any way. So in other words, that implies that there's not a right way and a wrong way, right? But uh, there's many ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So good, good answers. Great. If any come trailing in, I'll interrupt you because right. you yeah, know well. I, that's what I do. That is what you do. Yes, yes. <laughs> or maybe we can pick them up at the end of the. There's service. that. Yes. Maybe I won't. Yes. Interrupt maybe we you. won't interrupt. <laughs> Friends, I would like to close this message with a little story. A woman asked her pastor to come to her house to visit with her ailing father. And when the pastor arrived at the man's bedside, she noticed that there was an empty chair. And so she asked if she could be seated in the chair. I hope you're changing my camera. Of course. <laughs> and when she asked if she could be seated in the chair, the man hesitated for a moment and then finally said, yes. Well, she thought that that was quite odd, and so she asked the man, is, is the chair meant for someone else? And with a sheepish look on his face, the man said to the pastor, well, I'll tell you, but I will not tell my daughter because she will think I'm absolutely crazy. But I've always had trouble praying. And then I met a man who suggested this. He said, Put an empty chair in front of you and imagine that God is in that chair. And then just talk because that's what prayer really is. It's being in conversation with God. And so when I got home, the man said, I did just that. I put a chair in front of me and I started talking as if God was in that chair. And it worked. I felt much more uh, secure in my prayer life. And so now, sometimes for hours, I will just sit and talk to God. I just talk to God and God talks to me. And my soul is blessed by God's divine grace. But you know, if I tell, ever tell my daughter about this, she will think that I've lost my mind. Well, several months later, the man passed away, and when the pastor went back to the, to the daughter's home, she asked if he had died a peaceful death. And the woman said, yes, he did, but we, we discovered something very strange when we went to, uh, when we discovered that he had passed away. We noticed that, well, you know that he insisted on having an empty chair next to his bed. Well, we noticed that in the last moments of his life, dad pushed himself out of bed and he knelt down in front of that empty chair, putting his head on the seat. And it was there that he breathed his last breath. My friends, the second habit of highly effective Christians is to talk to God and pray on a regular basis. And so as we close this message today, we're going to take a moment and offer our prayers to God. And if you need an empty chair, that's okay. Let's pray. Oh God, we feel your presence here today. And we are grateful. We are thankful. Because we know that your presence means that you are guiding us and strengthening us 
and listening to us and hearing our needs. God, we know that you are sitting right beside us. And for that, we will always be grateful. Amen. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. As we consider the gifts we will give this week, let us remember that sometimes God answers the prayers of others through us. God uses God's people to do God's work in the world. And one way that happens is through our gifts, tithes, and offerings. When we give, we help other people. And when we help others, sometimes our gifts are the answer to their prayers. Therefore, let us give generously and cheerfully. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, today we can take this time to be grateful. We are abundantly blessed and joyfully share our time, talents, and treasures. As we are grateful and open to receive, we are also grateful and open to give. With many thanks, we bless the givers and the gifts. Amen. Friends, as we close our worship service this morning, we invite you to join in singing with us, Lord, listen to your children praying. Now, the verses might be a little bit complicated for the, as far as the rhythms go, so if you prefer, you can join us on the, um, on the choruses. But, uh, you know, give it a try, and let's see how it works. All right, let's, let's do this. Lord, send your 
this week as we go about our, our work and about our play. Uh, be with us as we minister to those around us. And most of all, help us to feel your presence in our lives every moment of every day. God, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Friends, may God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet Sunday. Kids, don't forget to uh, log into Zoom for Children's Church.